Hello fellow garage dwellers. Today we're going to be installing those cheap Cree U5 lights. Not to start right at the end, but there they are mounted on the Tiger 1200. So those are the uh, Cree U5 lights. Now there's two variants of the U5. One has silver a little silver ring at the end and one has a black. Hopefully you got the one with the silver because there's an easy hack you can do to get rid of a really annoying function on these lights. Now when you order these they come in a variety of prices and may even have different names just like those off-brand pegs that I put on in, in, the, in the last video. They come in a two-pack with like this with a nice Hayabusa on the front that I don't even see these lights installed on so that's kind of funny to me. Now what you'll get in them is really rudimentary. You're going to get the lights, a bracket half mounted to the light, a tool for the Allen key bolts, and that's it. It comes with its wires sticking out and that is it. Uh, so it, it seems like a really simple thing to, to install. But let me assure you that this is one of the longest uh, product installs that I've uh, had to deal with on bikes. Uh, this is kind of a long video and I want you to see all the trial and tribulation. Now I'm uh, beyond uh, a beginner <laughs> electrician. I, as, as far as dealing with electrics, I am uh, not even a novice. So I, I had to really practice before I started uh, getting on the bike. And those of you who do have a good knowledge of working with electronics, you're going to see me do things and you're going to be going, what the heck. Uh, I do plan on coming back later and doing some um, additional upgrades. One thing in particular is these are mounted to the battery. Now there is a switch, but because it's mounted to the battery, you can just turn them on at any time. Now in a future video, I'm going to be testing a product which is a voltage killer. Essentially, once it gets to 10.4 volts, it shuts off the power to that circuit, saves your battery. So uh, you know, at that time, I'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. Now in case you don't make it to the end of this video, let me just go ahead and show you what they look like. They look okay. Quite bright. Now let's show you that really annoying feature. It is a strobe light, so if you're photosensitive, skip this part. What a absurd feature to have on this product. I wish they didn't have it at all, along with that red diode that's on the inside. Just a couple more things before we get right into the meat of this install where you're going to see me progressively get more irritated throughout the video. Um, I decided to put them on the bottom of the bike because there wasn't a whole lot of places that looked like promising mounting points. I was actually considering building a bracket. I did build a bracket, in fact, to hard mount it to the nose piece. Uh, but my wife, probably rightly so, pointed out that as the wind hits this, it's going to move and vibrate, which wouldn't look so great with the, light, with the lighting effects. So we decided to run the lights at the bottom, which does mean that we have to run longer wires and, and it's 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 less clean looking so let's get to the video of me actually installing this cheap set of lights installation instructions from a thousand miles up this is just a simple wiring diagram battery here dotted line is our negative and our solid is the positive you have your battery and you have your two lines coming out then we have our switch we wire the primary positive to the switch then a continuing line from the other leg of the switch out which is going to connect to both headlights so you'll have to come those have to come together right there negative just simply goes out and both headlights must run to the negative and that's it it's real simple you do not need the yellow on this one there's a yellow a black and a red uh, the yellow is for an uh, additional type of installation don't even worry about it you don't really need it so, like with most of my stuff, I'm a pretty ghetto guy. I'm a very duct tape kind of guy, as you can see. Uh, uh, we're not going to be doing any soldering, anything fancy like that, because I would screw that up. Uh, I'm uh, slowly acquiring the tools to do good crimping and things like that. But for now, uh, we're just going to use old-fashioned butt crimp connections. Uh, 
and a uh, heat shrink tape with a heat gun. What we have here is I went and bought some wire. Now for this particular project we only need we, we only need a positive and a, a negative or a neutral. And we're going to be wiring our positive into our switch. The switch, this is only a positive line switch. So you know, it's basically like, you know, in and out and you run the out to the lights. And the switch is just a open close point. So and we're going to be doing this for now. Uh, a little bit ghetto, we're going to hook it right to the battery. Now, you probably shouldn't do that because if some kid comes up and turns the light on, the switch on, it will turn the light on to the point to which it drains the battery. So I have ordered a 12, actually a 10.4 volt disconnect, and you simply run the lines in and out, and if it drops below 10.4 volts, it'll kill that circuit. The problem, it must be coming from uh, Lithuania or something, so it won't be here for a long time. So when it gets here, I'll do a separate video on that and how well it works. There's going to be some challenges with that and it probably deserves its own video. All right, so first we're going to measure the amount of wire that I want to cut. And to do that, I'm simply going to go to the bike and pull out some wire. Just estimate, essentially. We're going to be running the wire along the tank on this particular project. And I've even got some wire protector here that uh, if we can fit it in places, we can use that as well. So we're going to go about an arm's length, a full arm's length on this one. And I'll cut one wire, and then I will go ahead and cut the other wire to the same length. Okay guys, now I want to show you another tool that uh, is going to really, if you are, if you also suck at electri electrical work like me, um, you know the pros, they'll take the cheapest, dinkiest thing and they'll just whoosh, pull the stuff off. I picked this up today and I, I freaking love it. You simply put the wire in to the point with which you would like to. Now, I know everyone's seen these. This is a real basic tool. But I want to show you how well it works. Stick it in there. Look at that. Nice and easy, man. That's what we like to see. We can clean it up real easy. We didn't cut a single strand. Next thing, I like to reuse things. So I bought a battery tender a while back. And it came with this. It came with some extra bits and pieces and you know accessories. So there's the uh, there's the pigtail end for the motorcycle. We're gonna cut that right off. The reason that I kept it though is that it's a fused positive. That means that these lights will have its own fuse. You, if you're not gonna tie into an a already fused system, I highly recommend you put a fuse in line. And I, I just keep these things and you know for this reason. So this kind of paid off. So we're gonna cut the ends off this and make it, actually we're going to keep the battery terminal in. We're actually just going to run it right from these. So I'm only going to cut this end off and I'm going to separate the wires. Now another thing you're going to want for this is some dielectric grease. We are going to coat our joints and we're going to actually just put some of this on the wire and twist it around before we put it into the butt joint. Uh, and that will help us with oxidization and some waterproof because realistically these are not the best um, I would recommend posi tap I would recommend a really good cold weld crimp kit I'll be getting that in the future now we're gonna fit our heat shrink over this ahead of time and you want your heat shrink to fit tightly over your wire it needs to be big enough it needs to be also big enough for our uh, butt connector so let's find out if we can even nope we need a bigger one yep it'll fit nice and tight put a little bit of grease on it's like a silicone type substance okay we're going to use the crimping tool pick the wire size Okay, and you want to crimp it right behind the rubber tips. Should be nice and tight, which it is. And we're gonna slide our heat shrink. You want it about even. And now we use our heat gun. 
keep it nice and hot. Oh yeah. And you want to start in the middle and work your way out. That way if any of the grease is going to push its way out. And that's a nice tight connection there. Of course we will test all these connections before we make our install. I just want some wire runs ready to go that will do the job essentially. So one down, let's do the other one. I'm not going to show it and we'll cut to the next step after that. So you can do this one, you can do the negative line. So when I run my wire, I'm just going to go and experiment with that for a while. I'm not going to film all of it. Everyone's bike is different. You just have to find a way to hide wire. Um, a good way is under the tank, around the tank. I'm going to shoot for around the tank. I'd rather not take the bike completely apart to run the wire. Uh, the reason being, I'll probably go in later on, take the bike properly apart, and add in some ignition power later on down the road for GPS, things like that. So for now, um, I've got trips coming up. I want these lights installed. It's a matter of safety at this point. So uh, I'm just going to run the wire. I'll see you in a minute. All right, so what I was able to do is sort of run it along the inside of this piece here. And then... So in there, you can kind of even see it right in there, but that's because it's all loose right now. And then up into this, and I was able to go way inside of there, uh, so it shouldn't be in the way, and go back behind this bracket here, and then under, so where the inside's gonna connect, it'll go up under, and then through a port where it'll attach to the harness. So I'll run another, I'll run the, uh, the, the uh, negative wire, same path, and then I will zip tie all this together and try to make it look a little better. All right, guys, so personally, uh, I like to take off as little of these plastics as possible because I find that it's like a jigsaw uh, puzzle once you get it trying to put back together. If you're not a mechanic and you don't do this all the time with a specific kind of bike, it's really can be a pain in the butt. I took as little off as I had to just enough to make wiggle room to run the wire. There's plenty of room on the inside of this. This is just sacrificial plastic. And then what I did was I went through, I ran each wire through that vent, and then I ran this sleeve down the length of the wire and all the way through, and, all, and, the, and this tube goes all the way up top. This protects the wire from any damage that's gonna happen. This is where the damage is gonna happen, guys. It has been a long day, but I got it wired in. So uh, some things I can tell you is uh, you'll get pretty good at wiring, uh, you know, uh, at the end of a long day of just doing nothing but wiring. This has been about nine or 10 hours. So um, and now I don't think it would take a, a, someone with a lot, you know, Someone with a lot of skill could do this much quicker. I had a few frustrations. had a few beers to uh, calm the frustrations. Um, at the end of the day, we have our working product. It's not completely finished and I'm still gonna be hiding wires. Um, right now, there's still things that are taken apart. I've turned off the lights in the room and it really does flood the, the ground around. I, my, my concern was getting more light around the front of the wheel so like turn lights essentially those headlights they do pretty good at range but they don't light up any of the ground near the bike so these do a pretty good job but uh, hiding the wires is kind of a pain I just want to show you guys that the install actually did come in pretty clean so essentially if we look in the side here there's really not too much in the way of visible wires I was able to feed a a negative and positive line up through a tube that goes right up through the uh, wiring harness and essentially we can tap into that at any point add in maybe a cell phone charger or whatever uh, the only two wires we have coming up are protected Let's see if I can get a better view here for you right there so from the inside you almost don't even notice the two coming up and they feed right on the inside of this there's a nice big space on the inside of these tigers. It goes all the way around under this. And you can just tuck a whole bird's nest of wire up under there. So that's pretty cool.
So it came out pretty good and the switch is relatively hidden. It's a very ugly switch. I don't really want it uh, featured on the bike. So there it is. All right, so how do these lights perform? This is just a general overview at this point. I haven't long-term ridden it. In fact, it hasn't even gone on its maiden voyage. But how is my impression of the lights? Well, they're very flimsy. They're very cheap. Uh, but the price is cheap, and that's good, because most auxiliary lights that are worth anything are extremely expensive on a bike. I, I hate the dim, and I hate the strobe. But the bright feature works very well, actually. I'm very pleased with the light that it puts out. For 18 to 26 bucks, that's pretty dang good. Here's where you'll lose in this deal. If you dare buy these cheap lights and then pay someone to put them in, it's going to end up costing you 100 to 300 dollars depending on the time and labor that your shop is charging. That would make an 18 dollar purchase ridiculous. And if you're going to have it done professionally, just go ahead and buy the nice lights. Go buy those Denali lights or whatever they are. They're expensive, but they work really well, and they're very versatile. And they're meant for adventure bikes. So and if it was my money and I was going to pay someone to do it, that's what I would do. Now, here's what you need to be warned about. If you don't install those fancy lights yourself, you're looking at a near $1,000 bill at the end of the process. Don't forget that you'll need brackets to mount if you can't make your own. Those range anywhere from $80 to $150 just for the for the brackets, just a couple of pieces of metal. You'll be paying for the person to actually install them. Now if I go and buy the Triumph lights, they're plug and play. The shop can install those in like one hour, maybe less than an hour. Because Triumph already has little wiring hidden in there that you can just tap right into. I don't want the Triumph lights. I think they're expensive and I don't think they work that great. So for me the cheap lights were the were the solution. But it wouldn't be cheap if I paid someone to put those in. So that's sort of my feedback on these lights. I hope this video was uh, helpful to you. If you're considering doing this, I just, uh, you know, be warned. This was a long job, and depending on your bike, it could be easier, it could be harder. So I, I hope you have a, a little more skill than me with wiring. Uh, that would make your life, your life a lot easier. Additionally, one better practice to do in this is to actually find a switchable wire source in the bike and tap into it. I was a little worried about cutting into the harness and pulling wires out and cutting them and testing them, so I decided to just run them to the battery for now. I will go, like I said, and update that later. Thanks as always for watching. Please check out my Instagram at MotoDrain. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. We're so close to that thousand goal. I'm really excited for it. It's just a big deal to me anyways. So with that, you guys ride safe, and I'll catch you next time.